When genetically modifying a cell, one can add additional DNAs such as plasmids that replicate as distinct molecules in the host. Alternatively, one can modify the sequence of the host genomic DNA. Today we will discuss the various means of modifying a pre-existing DNA inside a cell. We will discuss phage at site integration, site specific recombinases, homologous recombination, CRISPR, conjugation, transposons, and phage transduction. There are a variety of reasons one might choose to modify the genome rather than introduce a plasmid into a new cell. Most applications require both the addition of genes and removal of native genes. For example, one might knock out a branch of biosynthesis for small molecule production to divert flux towards a desired product. Genetic manipulations are most conveniently done in vitro on plasma DNAs for cassettes as large as 30 KB. However, for larger DNAs, it is easier to assemble such molecules in vivo. For most end-use applications, putting genes into the genome is necessary for genetic stability. Cells tend to lose plasma DNA when there is some evolutionary incentive to do so. Related to the previous, trying to put too many plasmids in one cell is usually toxic and unstable, leading to growth defects and inconsistent behavior. Additionally, the genome allows you to park genes at distinct loci that enables one to preserve the local context of the gene and potentially obtain more consistent expression upon additional changes. Finally, parking a DNA in the genome is the best way to get stable, single copy number. There are some plasmids that replicate at very low levels, but the only way to guarantee that your genes are at the exact same copy number as the native ones is to put them in the genome.